Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a haul. So I've got beauty items and one of them is going to be something that I definitely recommend as a potential gift option for Christmas. And then I have some Chanel makeup and skincare. And then I also have a couple Dior bags that I am keen to reveal to you guys. Before I dive into today's video, if you are new to my channel and you love luxury or you love fashion, doesn't have to be luxury brands. I do a mix of brands on my channel. Um, if you love beauty, which includes skincare and those kinds of things, as well as, you know, deep diving into the fashion world. I do a mixture of content on this channel, so I'm sure there's going to be something that you're going to enjoy. So if you are new here, I'd love if you'd hit that subscribe button below and also the bell to be notified when I upload new videos. I tend to upload every weekend and then I might occasionally put up a midweek upload as well. All right, so I'm going to dive right into the first part of this video, which is going to be the beauty device that I would highly recommend to consider as a Christmas gift to treat yourself, to treat someone else. I am a huge beauty skincare fan. Like, I feel like there is a sense of empowerment and a sense of confidence in actually looking after yourself, which includes things like skincare and beauty. So I have a fantastic beauty device that I want to show you guys. So this was gifted to me by Megalyn and this part of the video is sponsored by them. However, I actually did a, a collaboration with them before in a previous video and it was their hair removal device because they are a company that are a top provider of at home beauty devices. And I was so impressed by their hair removal device. I'm still using it right now. So this one is actually the Megalyn facial device. So essentially this is a RF skin tightener anti-aging, skin rejuvenation, uh, anti-wrinkles. Uh, it, it is like an all over kind of facial device that is really going to improve the quality of your skin. It's going to absolutely 100% help with the signs of aging. You can just buy the device on its own. Um, if you want to get the full benefits, it does. So it is sold as a set. You'll get um, the Firming Essence Mask, which is brilliant. And then you also get the Essence Gel. This is essentially a hyaluronic acid protein. This is the green color. They do also have a gold color as well. We've got the charging cable. So it does use a USB-C. So this facial device is actually wireless. You recharge it. I could actually use this while I was watching TV. You do have three stages. So you turn on the device just up here and your first stage is RF mode. Just click again to go to the next one. The next one is DA mode and the next one is DP mode. So, and then you've got your gears here just underneath. You can go up to a gear four. I would recommend to start on a gear one. Just taking the top off so you can see that's with the device currently on RF mode. Overall, it's a four in one anti aging solution device. So you've got the radio frequency technology, you've got the electrical muscle stimulation, then you have the red LED light and then the yellow LED light. So I'm going to give you a quick run through on how you actually use this device, but then I'm going to talk to you individually about each mode because each mode has a specific uh, target area or a specific purpose. Essence gel, you want to put that directly onto the top of the device up here. So you're going to use that on the DA mode, which is actually the daily use mode. And then I start to work slowly all over the actual facial area and including uh, the jawline and the neck. So you want to put your device down and you want to slowly drag across the skin, lift up and repeat. So you have to make sure you're actually doing it slowly. So that way you can actually feel the heat and you feel what the device needs to do. Now, the first time I used this device, I was absolutely amazed by the results. I did it on half of my face first. So you could, so I could really show you guys as well and see for myself as to whether this device really worked. And I was amazed. You could really see the lifting on the side that I had targeted on versus the other side that I had done nothing with. And this is like my morning face. So this is when I look the total worst, you know? And I could see the results in that first use of using this device. You could see all the lifting that had occurred in the face. Now also um, in the RF mode, now that's the mode that you have to use on your eye area. This is only a three minute mode though. Seeing that they might my under eye area had gone from having dark circles to pretty much having no dark circles. And I wake up with pretty dark circles in the morning. This device to actually rectify that just within three minutes, it was very impressive because like I said, that's been my problem area for quite a while now. Now, when I did my under eye area, I actually chose to use my own skincare and I already know the results with that. It's pretty great but it doesn't eliminate my dark circles. But this device pretty much almost 100% rectified the dark circles. They were almost pretty much gone. The other thing to note as well is that this device can ensure that your skin really gets the utmost benefit of whatever serum you're actually using. You will feel that difference after using the device with how it really helps your skin to absorb 
the benefits of that skincare. This device can also reduce your wrinkles by 20% just by using it for seven days. And then finally you have your DP mode. Now this mode you're actually gonna use in conjunction with your essence mask. And what you'll notice with this particular mask is that it has like a grid mapping area. That mode, you're gonna put the device on each of the individual grids. You're gonna leave it there and wait until you feel the vibration telling you to take it off and move to the next area. So this particular mode, that's when you're really going to feel these micro dots. There's 20 on there, they're micro RF dots. One single treatment using the essence mask in this device. You're getting the benefit of using eight regular masks. So let's say you used a mask seven days a week, that's seven times. By just using that mode, the DP mode once, with this essence mask, you're actually getting the benefit of even more than using a mask every day of the week. So you only need to do this once to twice a week. I was really impressed by this device and I've been using it for more than a week now and it's like every day it just my skin just gets better and better. So I think that this would make a great gift idea. It doesn't have to be for a female, it can be for a male as well. It's for male or female usage. I'm gonna have a discount code as well which I'll put on the screen and down below in the description bar as well. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to continuing using this device. This is now a permanent in my skincare routine. All right, so let's move on to the next so, okay, so this is the Chanel packaging for this year and it is gorgeous. And then they've also got the other option with the ribbon. Now I have actually unwrapped everything. So this did come in gorgeous Christmas gift wrapping, gorgeous ribbons, but I knew that if I spent the time unwrapping everything, it was just gonna take way too long. So these are the charms that you get this year. So you have a uh, number five, so that's new for this year. And it comes with like a little CC on it. And then there is the perfume bottle, which was the same one that they had last year. And again, it comes with the little CC. Cameras aren't really focusing in. Oh, well. Um, and then you have the CC charm and a little, it's actually a little Libages compact with the CC on it. This is actually new, so they didn't have this last year either. Same as the number five, they didn't have that last year. Now, if I remember correctly, last year they only did this in like Asia and Aust like Australia is a part of the Asia Pacific. So this year, apparently it's pretty much all worldwide. Like I think I've noticed that the United States has got it this year, um, all of Europe. I know with Europe though, like I don't know if it's in boutiques, I'm not quite sure, but I know that when I placed an order in Chanel in Italy um, I actually got the charm as well I got one of the charms with two of the gift sets I bought the gift sets because they were online in Italy as well but they had limited stock I know that in the US they get those gift sets and they get lots of them so yeah the charms I think a really cute addition again this year I love that Chanel is doing it and I have seen that apparently Chanel fashion is also doing kind of a similar thing so they have like charms that have like this kind of kind of like almost like a belt buckle kind of backing. It's a bit different to those. I think that they're a little less purposeful, but I think that they're designed much nicer and they look more like a kind of charm that you would get with a Chanel fashion item. Okay, so I'm gonna start off first with, I'm gonna start off first with one of the Chanel gift sets. I might as well mention this one first. I picked up the set that has the hand cream and the lip balm. I did have the blue one as well, but I decided to let it go purely because I already know that I'm getting one of the, um, like the holiday gifts from Chanel. Like I've, I know that I've actually got that coming as well. But yeah, I decided I wasn't gonna keep the blue one. I just wanted to keep the white one because I this is like the one that I kind of prefer. I feel like it looks more pretty, but now I'm kind of in some way regretting it because I really do like the pouches from this year. I feel like they're, I don't know, I just like the texture. It's bit, last year it was like a tweed and it felt a bit rough and I don't know, I just wasn't really that into it because it was like a silver pouch and then like a red pouch and I'm not a red person. So this year I really do like the pouches. You can convert them to bags if you want to, to use them as errand bags. So yeah, I let go of the blue set but now I'm kind of maybe somewhat regretting it I don't know I feel like it's more like a FOMO thing I don't really need it because it's not like this I'm not even gonna actually use this as a makeup bag I have the Louis Vuitton Nice in the BB so I use that as like a makeup bag I don't really travel much anyway so I feel like it's just a case of FOMO okay so um, the beauty items that I got from Chanel I have a heap here and oh, one of them I actually forgot to get. All right, I'll show you a picture of this one on the screen. I'm gonna start off with this, but I'll just show you how it looks because I, I already have it in my uh, bathroom drawers. So this is the Body Serum in Mist. And apparently this is supposed to be a anti-aging firming product. It helps to um, tone your skin. Uh, so I wanted to start trying this straight away and that's why I don't have it with me. It's essentially a spray mist. Like it's no different than kind of like a makeup setting spray in the way that it sprays out. It's very much like that. It does feel milky, like it does feel more like a serum mist, which is exactly what they say it is. I don't know if I've had any results. I've only been using it for like a couple days. I knew with the Megalin product, I was getting results instantly. I could see it straight away, but 
That's what I mean. Like sometimes you can spend all this money on skincare and you might only get very minor results and sometimes it just doesn't end up being worth it. That's why I think the Megalon brand has such great products because you will spend like a couple hundred dollars on something that's going to last you like perhaps forever. You're going to get a lot of use out of it and you're actually going to get results. Whereas this, I spent like $120 on it, Australian dollars, and a couple uses, I don't see any results whatsoever. I'll do this one as well because we're still on like the topic of skincare. So I'll probably just pick out all the skincare items before I show you the makeup items. So this is the Le Lift Anti-Wrinkle Firming um, Eye Serum and Eye Patches. Again, this is another one that I'm thinking I probably didn't even need to buy this because it was $200 Australian and I bought it before I even knew I was going to be doing a collab with Megalon because um, it was a pretty much a last minute kind of thing. So this I'm kind of thinking I probably didn't need to get because the reason I bought it was because I had read reviews at this serum and then the eye patches that you actually get in here and you only get, um, I think it's like 10 eye patches. Apparently online there's some reviews at this, that this eye patch and serum combination is great for removing dark circles. However, now that I've got the Megalon device, I didn't need to really go ahead and get it because I have that device and I already have some eye serums that I'm really happy with that are from Chanel. But I suppose it's good that I'll now get the opportunity to use the Lilift Flash Eye Revitalizer and see if it's great. But for $200 in such a small like bottle, like there's not much here. Look at that. That's only five mil. This is a five mil bottle. Whereas like you look at the, um, the Sublimage eye serum and yeah, it's like, it's more expensive. I think it's like about $300 but you're getting more. You're not just getting five mil, you're getting more than five mil. So I think in that retrospect, it's better to have, that. it's better that I had just bought another one of the Sublimage eye serums or even like there's other serums from Dior that I really like. The other one is the Le Lift Lotion. Now I love to use a lotion, like a toner kind of situation before I go in with any serums or creams. So the Le Lift Lotion, I'm gonna give it a crack and see if I like it as much as the Micro De Rose by Dior. However, I think because this is a smoothing, plumping, firming, this is going to be more on like the anti-aging aspect. Whereas I feel like the Micro De Rose by Dior is more like a glow, hydration kind of feel. Maybe I'll do a video of all my favorite skincare products or something, or beauty products. Would you be interested in that? Because I feel like I've pretty much tried a lot of luxury skincare at the moment. I have a little Rouge Coco Balm in Pink Delight. I love the Chanel lip products. I feel like they make the best lip products. Way better than Dior in my opinion. So that's it there. It's a beautiful neutral kind of pinky tone. I'll leave everything linked down below. I feel like the makeup products 100% hands down, you're gonna love it. It's the skincare items that are gonna be subjective. The other lip product I have is the Rouge Coco Gloss in the color Rose Naif. If that's how you say Naif, I don't know. <laughs> uh, this is like a pinky gloss. It's not opaque or anything like that. It's got like a sheerness, so it's not going to be too pink on the lips. The other one is a Le Beige's eyeshadow palette. I'm loving uh, eyeshadow palettes from Chanel at the moment because I'm just not liking really pigmented makeup. This is in the shade Deep, so it's got some beautiful glittery metallics in there. Definitely a neutrals kind of palette. Powder product is actually the Chanel Holiday Collection. This is the Duo Lumiere. So it comes with a little brush. I don't always use these brushes though. Sometimes I find them totally useless. And then this is the highlighter here. It's so beautiful. I actually find that this is too beautiful that I can't even crack into it. So I am actually going to buy another one. I'm going to buy a second one, one to use and one to just admire because um, I'm crazy like that. And then the last one is the Sublimage Le Concentrate Lumiere. This is a limited edition highlighter. It's in a liquid form. It comes with a little cute fan brush, which I think is so cute. Great for like travel as well, but to use it on the tops here of your cheekbones, your bridge of your nose, tip of your nose, Cupid's bow, that kind of thing. That's how the pump looks. So it's very luxurious. It's pretty pricey for what it is because it's not that big. It's 15 mil only. Um, the bottle makes it look bigger, but it's not. I think it's like about $135 Australian or something like that. Uh, however, you only need a little bit. A little goes a long way when it comes to this one. Okay, the first bag is not going to be an unboxing. I don't have a box for it. I don't have a dust bag for it because it is too big. But I got... A re this is a repurchase actually. This is the Dior book tote. I have had this before, as a matter of fact. Um, I owned it a while back and I sold it off ages ago because I found it, I don't know, I found it awkward to use. It was too big, used to bang into people, that kind of thing. And at the time I kind of bought it because it was a hype product. But now I kind of 
like now I've repurchased it because I realize I actually kind of need like a big massive tote because this can be handy for going to the beach for like if I'm going back to New South Wales and the, sometimes we drive back then I can use something like this in the car to carry things so I've realized that I kind of really need like I kind of thought to myself I think I could add it back thankfully enough I didn't have to pay the retail price because it's actually gone up a lot I think when I sold it I pretty much got my money back anyway because it was still really hyped product so I'm not really regretting it and I also had it in like the burgundy before and I feel like I kind of just prefer it in like the navy oblique this way I don't really tend to buy Dior at retail price anymore I just don't think that I mean there probably is something I would buy at retail price if it's like the lower price sort of stuff but their handbags at their prices they don't tend to hold their value so yeah Dior book tote is a repurchase for me it's huge it's big but it definitely but it does serve a purpose if you need a big tote bag and the structure factor I quite like about it because it's always going to retain its shape it's always going to look I don't know I just feel like it's not going to look like a hot mess even if you use it a lot and I think that's probably what they had in mind with designing it as such a structured big tote bag it was that you weren't going to end up with a hot mess if you overuse this bag and the only downfall is that it's a fabric so eventually you're going to get some kind of like corner wear and damage on the bottom and that kind of thing it's going to happen i will link some pre-love down below because i like i said i don't think it's really worth to buy the dior handbags at full price the lower cost ones maybe not so bad but like anything that's like over say like four thousand you could just get them for less pre-loved anyway that would be what i would advocate for and like i said i haven't bought i pretty much only dual handbags i've ever bought at like retail price recently would be like the nomad travel pouch because it's a lower cost kind of bag that is it otherwise i tend not to like those little pouches those travel pouches maybe this wallets or something wallet on chains those kind of things would be the only ones i'd be all right to pay retail for but the ones are like over 4,000, I'd be like, why? When I know that they do, I know that there's private sales and I know that in the pre-love market, they sell for less. Another dual bag that I also got from private sales. This actually didn't come with a box. A lot of the time the private sales stuff doesn't come with a box. Sometimes it doesn't come with a dust bag, that kind of thing. So I've just put it into my own kind of box. This is something that I definitely wouldn't seek out to buy. You know what? It's under the retail price. I really like the bigger version of this bag and it's cute and I don't have anything like it so this is more like a YOLO kind of purchase this is not something that you typically would see me buy like this kind of coloring but it's definitely unique and there is like I'm looking at my collection and there's nothing like it so I feel like it's going to be fun to use as like an as an evening bag this you're going to see it and you're going to see why I'm saying it's going to be like an evening going out bag it is not going to be an everyday run in the mill kind of bag no way all right any guesses what's inside? Maybe you can tell by the shape. What do you think I got? Like the book tote was like too huge to do any guessing game with. Like it's ginormous. But this is cute. It's mini. All right. I got. Oh, wow. Look at that. Um, I don't know if this is a small or the mini. I don't know how they classify the sizes. I already have a D-Joy. And I think I would have referred to it as like this medium, I suppose. So I think this is the small. And maybe there's a mini that's even smaller than this. I don't know. I'm not 100% sure. But the D-Joy is fairly new to the Dior range as well. It's kind of like their new classic. I don't think it's going anywhere. I think they're actually going to keep this because it essentially is modelled off the classic Lady Dior, but they've kind of changed the shape of it to be more like um, uh, east-west as opposed to like north-south, you know, or even the Dior Lady that's proportionally pretty normal in its shape. It, it's probably more like a north south east west kind of design like it's fairly proportional whereas this is quite obvious that it's an east west kind of design so yeah i think that it's going to stay in the dior collection i don't think that they're going to get rid of it so in that case when they make something a classic it is not so it's pretty great if you can actually get it pre-loved under the retail even better if you can get it new private sales you know um but yeah like the or even if you do want to pay the retail price it's not so bad because eventually it's going to continue to go up in price anyway whereas like when you buy the ones that you can tell aren't going to be classics like for example i'll use my own bag for example the dior vibe the bowling bag so i'm trying to sell that at the moment but dior has stopped making it so it's not a classic and that's when things start to go south so that dior vibe thankfully I, I got it private sales thankfully because if i had bought that at retail price i would be making thousands and thousands of dollars in loss because that retail was about five thousand nine hundred dollars australian i'll put a picture of the bag as well on the screen i already have it on the screen but luckily i didn't have to pay that so i'm selling it for two thousand eight hundred dollars australian if you are interested it's a bargain of a deal in contrast to what it retailed for but that's exactly why when it comes to dior you've got to be careful about paying the full retail price on some of their bags 
because sometimes they discontinue it and then it's no longer as like sought after when something's not a classic because you'll get people that might be new to the brand they're looking for their first Dior bag and they're not going to see it anymore on the website it doesn't exist so it's not going to come to their mind it's only going to be people that know that it existed before that are going to search for it or people that are just browsing all Dior bags pre-loved that's the only way someone's going to come across that kind of bag like the Dior vibe I think it's very unique though I think in terms of its shape how it looks it's super cool it's sporty I actually still really like it the problem is that I wasn't using it because I need it to be like a shoulder bag and I found that in terms of the shoulder strap I wasn't loving its configuration and it wasn't as practical for me but the Dior vibe if you're willing to use it as a top handle bag it is super cute like the cutest bowling bag ever the cutest sporty chic kind of street style bag ever it is great for that but I mean I, I've got kids so I'm not really going to use it as like a top handle bag and it's not kind of like an evening bag like this where I could just keep it strictly for evening use it's not that kind of bag in my opinion anyways let me show you this enough said about that I think I've already made my point there essentially a silver um, but it actually has an iridescence to it and it's pr it's like a metallic -y kind of silver So it's supposed to look like it shifts into like a rainbow like a rainbow kind of silver iridescent I've actually seen Chanel do this with a, a wok before like ages ago They did this with like a wok I think it might have been about a year ago or something like that The same as with this Dior one you can see here it really shifts to like an iridescent metallic It is not like how do I describe it like because the iridescence is not like a chrome shift shift it's not like that it's really much like a metallic-y kind of shift I don't have anything that's like iridescent anymore in my collection I got rid of my Chanel ones and that was kind of because I know I don't really use iridescent bags much but I also feel like those flat bags like Chanel flat bags they're not really like evening bags to me in my opinion I feel like they look kind of casual because they're like crossbody bags you know uh, whereas this is just going to be like a strictly going out kind of bag like I know it's not going to get a lot of use but it is super cute and I mean I didn't have to pay the retail price anyway. Uh, that's how it looks at the back. So it's all like a beautiful puffy kind of quilt. It's different than the other D-Joy that I have. Um, the downfall with the D-Joy is that you do kind of get marks on that top flap from these rings here. They kind of leave impressions, but you know, it is what it is. That's okay. Not a big deal. And then inside you've got the straps. So you get two straps when it comes to the D-Joy. So I think in that regards, it's also good value that way. So you've got a strap that's long enough to go crossbody. Actually still pretty like kind of not too long on me, but it's a bit longer than I usually would wear like a crossbody. But I don't really feel like I'll use this as a crossbody. It just, I don't know, this bag just doesn't look like the kind of bag that you would carry as a crossbody bag. Like it's small. It doesn't, it's not going to fit a lot. Like I can already tell. Where's my phone? So my phone, this is the iPhone 15 uh, Pro. See how it's just going to take up. Like you're still going to have room left, but it's a narrow bag. So you're not going to fit a lot in there. So I don't think I'd be using this as a crossbody because I feel like when you use something crossbody, that's more for like if you're wanting to use it casually, like during the daytime or something. Um, this is definitely just going to be like more of a nighttime use. Like, look at that. There's not a lot of space in there. You're going to fit like a card holder, key pouch, lipstick, that kind of thing. The strap I'll more than likely be using it with is this one here. So it's like a pochette sort of style bag. So when you carry it like this, the this does kind of flap down. Those handles don't stay up. And I feel like that makes it a little bit more casual. But it just gives it another option if you need to be hands-free. You happen to take it out when you're like, you know, of an evening or something. But I would probably just use the strap like that. I like could have it hanging down and use it handheld but at least I'd have the option to put it on my shoulder because the reality is is that if I go out at nighttime chances are my kids are going to be with me and we're going to be going out for dinner as a family like that would be our nighttime kind of thing so yeah like it's not like I would really be just going out my husband and I that doesn't happen very often it's mostly only when my family is in town that I'll have someone to babysit the kids and then we can go out so my new in Lady D Joy and then my new in your book tote <laughs> repurchase for me and I'm pretty sure it'll work out this time because I think now I've realized how I actually want to use this bag whereas before I kind of just bought it on a whim like on hype I think if anything I bought it because I had to do an exchange for something and I was like oh I need to use this credit and I hate credit notes and I didn't know what to get and I was like oh the Dior book tote's really hyped it's all over social media you know I'll get that and I need a you know bag I can use as a new mum I think that was my mentality but I hadn't really quite thought about how I would use it would it be comfortable to use is it the right kind of mum bag and at the time no it wasn't it based on my lifestyle back then you know and even then not long after COVID came around so it just 
yeah, it wasn't a great bag for me. And then, yeah, this cute little bag is just a new fun addition to my collection. Something different, something I don't have. So that is it for this video. Um, I'll leave everything linked down below. I'll leave the D-Joy linked down below, pre-loved. I don't know, I'll link some options, like a mini version, the normal version, which I think is the best one. The standard size, which is like the medium size, I feel like that's the best one because you can actually use that during the day as well because it's a bit more of a substantial size. And I just, yeah, I think that's the better size, but this is also super cute to have. I could definitely see myself adding another one of these just because it's so cute and I just don't have anything that's really... I definitely, I feel like in terms of like adding the first D-Joy, I feel like the uh, like the medium size is probably the better one to have because it's something you can use day and night. It does both. And then once you've already got that and if you really like the bag, then adding in the other small sizes is, you know, okay as well. I think there's a micro version of this. It doesn't even fit a phone. I don't know. I'm not 100% sure if they did that, but that one I would say no. I wouldn't recommend that. I'm actually disliking bags that don't fit phones <laughs> i don't feel like i like that anymore i feel like that's actually i think that's actually super annoying when a bag doesn't fit a phone um but yeah i'll leave everything linked down below and some suggestive links to pre-loved items for these bags and don't forget as well the megalon um device i'll have that link down below and the discount code and that kind of thing be a great potential christmas gift idea and of course as well chanel beauty items you can't really go wrong with that especially with that packaging um but that is it for today's video i hope you liked it and give it a thumbs up if you did and i'll see you guys in my next one